Wow, um, I think I'm going to get probably a lot of abuse for this, but Ironmans are actually easier than swim runs, certainly that distance of a swim run. The Triathlon Show, episode 63. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host, Michael, and today's episode is a bit of a special episode. It's all about swim run, and it will have a lot of actionable tips, tools, and tactics that uh, you can use in your first or next swim run race in both training, racing, and uh, preparation for it. But the format is a bit different in that I'll have several different audio clips from before and after the race, and uh, we will have a lot of those actual tips and our experiences just as conversations that that come through those those clips that we recorded in the heat of the moment, so to say, on our mobile devices at the pasta party after the race before the, and after the pricing ceremony and so on so it's uh, an interesting kind of episode i think it's uh, it's been very interesting to put it together and i hope that you enjoy it so do send me feedback about what you think about it to michael at scientific and that's uh, michael with a k and uh, yeah i'll be back after these different audio clips with uh, the overall conclusions from the episode so stay tuned for that in this first clip that you'll hear, it's uh, me and Simon Briley, my race partner and coach. And we're discussing at uh, the pasta party the night before the race about our preparations so far, our expe- expectations for the race, and also nutrition planning preparations, and a bit of the other things that we had in mind at that point. And uh, obviously, you will hear at a later point about the results of the the race did me and simon become finnish natural champions or not well you need to listen to this episode to hear that so uh, keep listening but here's the pre-race recording from the pasta party of the night before the race Simon and I are sitting here at the pasta party the night before the race and uh, are we ready to go Simon what do you think I think we're ready to go um, yeah looking looking good looking sharp we're eyeing up our competition on the on the tracking device um, by the way everyone you can uh, track us on the on the GPS live that's going to be um, quite interesting to yeah, see yeah well they're, they're going to hear this after the race so <laughs> <laughs> okay well <laughs> track away anyway <laughs> do, do that we'll, we'll load up our GPS files at a later yeah. date and uh, you can have a look at that stuff yeah. definitely yeah what what's the plan for tomorrow well we're going to do a bit of swimming we're going to do a bit of running um, sorry I'm quite relaxed about this um, I'm just trying to stay relaxed it is a little bit um a little bit of nerves, a little bit of um, fun, but also it's quite a serious distance that we've got to take quite seriously. Yeah. So just to reiterate, it's uh, 10k, 10 kilometers of swimming and 41 kilometers or 42 kilometers of running, and that's broken down into 18 or 19 run segments and uh, 18 or 17 swim segments. So we're looking at probably eight hours plus, 8:30 maybe that uh, we'll finish in. So. Uh, so that's uh, that's a long day out. It's uh, almost like an Ironman, but the intensity is a lot lower because it's uh, just the kind of race that this is. Very gnarly terrain and quite a bit of navigation, probably, from what we're hearing, but we're not quite sure. So we will have a map and compass. Um, what what about the cold? You've been training now in, in a cold river back home in, U- in the UK, so do you feel adapted to it and ready to swim in the cold? Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly, it's uh, what I've what we swam in yesterday uh, wasn't wasn't as cold as what I've been swimming in in the river, and so certainly, uh, it, it's been a good process of I've done the best that I can for acclimatization, being based in the UK. Uh, but however, I would have liked to have probably done a little bit more sea swimming. Um, the sea doesn't taste the same here. 
it's no. not as salty yeah. as Cyprus when I'm it's used to. 0.3% salt, I believe. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So it's quite a lower density. Yeah. So we're not necessarily going to be as buoyant in a wetsuit as we were, as we were in, in Cyprus in particular, or in other mm. seas that I've, I've been used to swimming in, certainly with the wetsuits. So yeah, climatization has been as best as I can for where I've been based in the UK. Equipment, preparation, everything feels good with your new swimmer and suit and all? Yeah, haven't haven't needed to bring a bike with me on this time. Flying without a bike is, is a new one to me. Um, but no, so seriously, uh, um, swim boy, we've, we've now tethered that off so that when you do get out the swim, you're not just drop, having to carry it in your hand or drop it on the floor. Or even when you're swimming in the sea, it could actually just float away <laughs> from yeah. you. Um, so it's tethered off and uh, that, that's something which is obviously very new. Um, the swim run wetsuits, uh, I've got mine from Zone 3, the Evolution suit. Um, there's been some adaptations that I've got had to get used to without the buoyancy in the legs as much as, because it's only a, only a two mil thickness in the legs in the quad area. Um, but that's for the running side of things, yeah, to be freer. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise you would be very confined and find it difficult to run. Quite restricted, although I do like to wear compression shorts quite a bit on my triathlons on Ironmans, but you're absolutely right, to run straight out of the water it's going to be a, an interesting if you are too tight and too much material there. And it's for shoes, what are you wearing for shoes and so, how, how have you been finding them? Yeah, I mean, um, they're going to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, they're going to cause uh, I, I've tried to look at that a little bit more on the technical side and they're evolving the run, the swim run shoes these days there's a lot of trail shoes out there but there's some trail shoes which are got Gore-Tex coating or Gore-Tex material on it you don't want to be having Gore-Tex in your, in your swim run shoes because they are they will trap the water in once the water gets in there and hold onto a lot more water we want that to drain out as soon as we get out onto the land as quickly as possible so I'm running in um, on uh, which is my shoe sponsor for the past uh, wow I've been running in ons for about the past five years but they've brought out a trail shoe which is the on adventure peak trail shoe um, and that's uh, that's been going pretty well I've, I've probably done about probably about 50 60 kilometers of running over my training periods for this event um, in and out of the water and also on some trail runs in particular uh, but yeah I, I think I'm, I'm pretty pretty okay with the selection of the equipment that I'm, I'm on I'm on the best there mm. and I'll give some shout out as well for equipment and my experience and I'm now in a colting wetsuit swim run suit and uh, Jonas Colting is the founder of that company and he's obviously a one of the best swim runners out there I think and used to be an elite triathlete and so uh, big shout out to Colting Wetsuits because they uh, helped me out in a pinch when my old swim run suit uh, which was not a Colting Wetsuit uh, broke and uh, I reached out to them because I had already gotten uh, paddles from them and Simon as well so we're using Colting paddles and I actually got their wetsuit as well which is uh, really really good from the one swim run I've done it's I love how, how easy it is to run in it that's uh, the one thing that sets it apart I think uh, there are some things that uh, maybe I would like a back pocket of some sort but uh, but mostly I found it brilliant and then my my shoes that I have are from Icebug and they are actual uh, specific swim run shoes so the Icebug Accelerators and they have been brilliant as well stepping down into the water onto rocks and they still have a great grip so so that's been, been going really good and they drain really really fast so so that's excellent and like yourself I've been training not here but in Helsinki and I think the water is slightly warmer here although where we did our training session yesterday the water temperature was probably a degree or two warmer than what it will be further up north and uh, in the more unprotected areas of, of the island so but things are looking good how's the hamstring holding up what, are you, what, what do you think about that? <laughs> I was hoping you weren't going to mention it. Um, it it's, it's twinging like a guitar. You can, you can play it like a guitar string. Um, it, it is, it's there. It's conscious. We went for a little run today, and I, I was trying to find a position to, to run a little bit more relaxed and, and uh, freer. But um, as we said earlier, and as we've kind of done on the previous blogs, the, the running sections are not going to be 
sub 430 per K, you know, um, pace wise, you just, it, it's impossible to yeah, hit that. And it's it, not it, monotonous, yeah. like it, running on the roads would be with the exact same stride time and time again. Absolutely. So stride length is going to be uh, over rocks, over over gravel, over through forests, you know, different things. It, it's not no footpath. There are some sections, certainly on the last stage, one of the longer stages on the runs, which is going to be a bit of road, um, but still, still we won't be striding out at like we would in a 10k run or in a, a marathon for me in particular I certainly won't be hitting five minute four minute k's on that side of the pacing yeah and uh one more thing that i've had my injury struggles as well during this swim run training so it hasn't been completely smooth sailing i had a, a week or so maybe a bit more than a week where my re- knee was really really sore and i wasn't running on it at all so skipped all running just swim open water swim training but that uh, fortunately has been working out really well and it seems completely healed by now and has been for a week so the program that i outlined uh, a few weeks ago on the swim run training episode i haven't been able to stick to that unfortunately but those are things that happen and we just need to make the best of it and uh, i think that uh, we have a good endurance base and uh, tactical awareness that is uh, going to be really really important for us tomorrow and having the preparations done one final thing in this pre-race episode we did our nutrition planning and preparation for today so what did we do for for that simon so we've actually been quite this is another benefit to us as well because of um both of us involved in coaching um myself in the ironman racing and uh recently working through with my coach on a stringent very stringent and particular nutritional plan for my ironman race in austria which was absolutely perfect so we've got this knowledge between us on um, certainly a better plan than last year for yourself, Mikel. Yeah. Uh, on the nutritional side, uh, what we call a, hitting a, the wall. A, a plan is good to have. <laughs> Just any plan was better than last year, I think, um, was what Mikel was trying to say there for a minute. Um, so we've actually looked at how much calories we're going to need to be consuming per hour. Um, yes, we're in the water, so it's a very false environment, which is the difference of this type of swim and run, where you think you're not getting dehydrated. Uh, you see people on pool sites, swimming in pools or in club sessions, and they have a bottle of electrolytes or a bottle of hydration or carbohydrate drink on the side of the pool. Um, th- this, the reason why is because they potentially are doing a 5K swim set in that pool, and therefore you think you don't need to rehydrate during that session, but it will increase your performance and uh, also aid your recovery after that session. But for us tomorrow, we're looking at um, maintaining our glycogen levels, which is very important to us. So that calorie count, that a, a carbohydrate of an average of a, of a minimum of 60 grams per hour. So that's 60 grams per hour that we've been calculating. And we will, if we need any more, we can easily pick up that extra from a feed station. Although we were turning our noses up at the menu yeah, um, from the Michelin and star. buns, pickles, <laughs> and uh, what do we... Fish have? soup. Fish uh, soup, yeah, that's a finish line, yeah. Um, but what, one thing that we didn't even discuss that I just started thinking about is that the potentially extra amount of calories that we'll burn through, even at a low intensity, just to keep our bodies warm and keeping the core temperature up, because we will get towards hypothermic or more hypothermic than than normal with swimming in the water and, and we will the body will need to expand energy to keep the core temperature up so that's another factor to take into account and and uh, so yeah the nutrition that we have for example for myself i'm looking at 18 gels i think and then it was something like two liters of of uh, sports drink so that added to up to that 60 grams per per hour of carbohydrates and i also use uh, precision hydration uh, products uh, that I added to the sports drink to get additional electrolytes because in the swim run suit even though as Simon says it's a false environment that because it may feel a bit cold you don't think you're sweating but in that swim run suit running in it you will be sweating and uh, so I will be very careful with replacing the electrolytes as well anything else uh, to add now or should we hit the bed and uh, prepare for tomorrow and then maybe yeah absolutely do, yeah. it's um a looking forward to it really excited and um we uh, hopefully we won't fall out with each other so there is the other psychological team motivation um aspect and element to these types of uh, team events eventing uh, day eventing stuff it's a new sport it sounds 
really amazing and I can only say sounds because I haven't taken part in one yet. I've been trying to do as much training as I possibly can. Mikel's done this race and this course last year and um, so I think um, that's our, our bonus uh, added element for tomorrow's event and um, if it, I think it will be a, a bonus um, for uh, medals uh, or at least a podium certainly yeah. um, but we would like to yeah should we lay it down we'd yeah, like we would to like go to out win. for the win we yeah, would like to win go. the first ever Finnish <laughs> national championships absolutely fantastic great awesome and in this next clip you'll hear we are sitting outside of the restaurant at the finishing area we had uh, been uh, having a nice sauna, typical Finnish tradition, of course, to have after races. And uh, obviously after a cold race like this, it's uh, really nice to have. We are just waiting for the pricing ceremony, but uh, the question remains, did we win a prize or not? Did uh, Simon's hamstring hold up? Were our preparations good enough? Were we tough enough? Did we suffer from hypothermia or fall off a cliff or something? You'll hear all of that in uh, this next episode. And obviously, uh, on a more serious note, you'll hear about some of the things that we did well and some of the things that we did not so well, including both on the pacing, nutrition side of things, and, and even things like uh, navigation, following markers and orienteering, all those sorts of things. Equipment is also a big part of this uh, conversation. So here you go. Here's another audio clip with me and Simon post-race. So we're now finally sitting here after the swim run, all swim run event, the Finnish natural championships. It's a beautiful day. The sea is still completely calm. It's warm for Finland. And uh, Simon, how are you feeling? <laughs> Very sore. Um, that was challenging. Yeah, one word, challenging. <laughs> uh, where does it stand compared to an Ironman? Uh, wow, um, I think I'm going to get probably a lot of abuse for this, but Ironmans are actually easier than swim runs, certainly that distance of a swim run. Yes, and that, and that terrain. Uh, I haven't done an Ironman, so I won't take a stand on that, but uh, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take my word for that. <laughs> yeah. So so our results, let's first mention quickly our results. We did, uh, it was a 10 kilometer swim in total, 17 segments, and I believe an 18 segments of running for a total of 42 kilometers. And we actually ended up with 53 kilometers or so in total. And the time was 9.57, so almost 10 hours. So it was Ironman comparable. And we finished second in the race, but first in the Finnish national championship category. So we're very happy with that. Oh, yeah. And uh, we are the first ever Finnish national championship uh, champions in swim run. So let's talk through the experience a bit more. Well, well let's give, us, give you a brief overview first. So in anything else that you want to mention from a very, very brief couple of sentences about your experience today? Certainly. I mean, out there, there was times that we did get a little bit down and um, demoralized. So it's certainly a journey that we, we were heading out there, but maybe we'll cover that a little bit more in the conversation and personal reflection. Um, but we seem to work really well together and I was quite happy about that. Amazing location. Um, guys, if you're ever thinking of, guys or girls, excuse me, if you're ever thinking of doing a swim run and uh, you are not necessarily new to the sports and you don't have a history of uh, multi-sports uh, competitions or, or sporting um, activities, uh, I would certainly um, just be a little bit hesitant on this one in particular, but there is a shorter event available here on the same weekend, on the same day today um, in itself. But fantastic location, awesome, a little bit difficult to get get to because it's out in the middle of nowhere in yeah, between sweden yeah. and uh, finland but um wow i mean we are sitting here and the sun is setting there is a there is a slight um glow in, on the horizon behind the trees and the water is a glass um yeah it's glass pond there. yeah from, from my point of view the experience today was uh, really great it was wonderful to be back and uh, in i think it's a magnificent route that we uh, that this race has uh, has found and they really showcase the most beautiful parts of of these islands uh, definitely and i'm saying that as somebody who has lived here for um 13 years or so so uh you can take my word for that and the other big experience from a more swim run performance point of view was that 
the pre preparations this year were so much better, so much more thorough than last year. Uh, Simon is uh, kind of agreeing, but <laughs> not necessarily completely. But from my point of view, for you, yeah, yeah, I yeah. felt I felt very prepared, and uh, and that definitely helped me have a much greater, better race than last year. And I'm definitely not going to be affected for as long as last year from both the swim and the run side, and will recover much quicker, I think. So let's uh, take it from the start. Um, why don't you talk us through the first few segments until uh, aid station one? Yeah, great, because I probably remember more of that than the, yeah. actual, <laughs> the, the, the latter parts of the actual stages. Um, I, personally, just to reflect, and this is not an excuse for the listeners out there, but I came into this with a torn hamstring from three weeks ago. Um, and, uh, okay, why should I, why did I take part? Why shouldn't I take part? I think it was you, you put out the invitation, I suggested it to you, and, and we went, why not? Let's see if it can happen. So uh, really exciting. And when I finished pro racing on triathlons, Ironmans, I actually said I wanted to do something uh, not extreme or, or really stupid, I think is the phrase, but more crazy and new. So what a perfect, like, what a perfect event, perfect event to come to do. So, um, stage one, we started at the hotel on the north of the island. Yep. At the very north of, of all the islands. So you got the, the entire north of the Baltic Sea, nothing between you and uh, the very northernmost cities along the, uh, northeast coast mm, of sweden mm. it, it, we can't really paint the picture for you because it would have been nice to actually have looked a little bit out of the view and spent a bit of time there but um unfortunately it was we arrived a little bit late on the coach and we were pushing for time i think we started a little bit later on didn't we or a uh, couple of minutes yeah a couple of minutes um so we got changed we got all prepped we had a briefing inside the hotel and um the first stage was a run um four <laughs> kilometers four mm -hmm. kilometer run and the first kind of maybe kilometer at the most, or not even that, maybe just under, was on a little gravel track, uh, um, a road in, in particular. And then all of a sudden we took a right hand turn and, and <laughs> we suddenly became, have found a forest in front of us. The thing that we really struggled throughout the whole day, I, I believe, was following the little markers. So it was two ribbons or one ribbon tied to trees throughout most of the course but not um not 100 um, percent and it's interesting yeah. that you say that we struggle because from me having participated the year before i think that we did really great with them and uh, actually staying alert all the time and really not wasting a lot of time you had those moments when you need wasted a few minutes here and mm. there not wasted you needed those minutes to find the next marker absolutely but we had i definitely think that we we did a better job this year than, than what I did last year with my uh, with, with my participation right, and okay. in finding those markers. Yeah, certainly. I mean, this is this is swim run for you. It's almost like orienteering, but we weren't quite per hundred percent of the time with our compass out. Um, obviously, I had to put it back in the in the pocket if it worked, if it was calibrated correctly as well on today. Um, so we kind of followed the rest of the groups and um, stuck with the leaders at the time, at the, certainly the first stage, um, and then someone who. Um, um, a team that was a mixed team kind of took the advantage because they had prepped the course uh, the day before and were really keen to get going. Um, so we pushed through on the first stage. Um, it was okay. It was pretty good. Maybe a little bit too too um, uh, kind of um, rushed. Not rushed, but we weren't sprinting. I don't know what the paces were. Yeah, again, my, my experience from last year is that we were much more Reserved. tactical about yeah, it and yeah. uh, conservative in terms of pace and right. effort especially so so i think that it, it felt like a perfect effort yeah but then okay. obvi obviously uh you then had your ha hamstring flare up on you on, on, that stage, first stage. on the first yeah. stage yeah um which i was expecting and i was waiting for um then we we got into the water on the first swim section it wasn't that cold i was expecting it to be a lot more a lot colder and to I, give some context it was what do you say 12, 13 14 13 14 degrees 13 Celsius. 14 yeah. degrees and i've been training in the rivers in the uk and that was certainly 10 or 11 degrees yeah, yeah. which was great climatization and um certainly something to to deal with the cold water syndromes um a shock sorry cold water shocking um we swam well in the first time um uh, we decided that with me being the strongest swimmer that i would take the lead but 
Looking back at the whole day today, I don't think you're getting the same advantage within swim run on the swim section as you would get within a triathlon on um, or open water swimming in, in just that swimming uh, zone in itself. Uh, you can't go beyond 10 meters of each other throughout in the swims and it's so I was constantly looking behind but it was fine we were working together and the sighting wasn't um, we, we did really well today on the I sighting. think we did really well on that yeah um, yeah we didn't I tend to think I swim reasonably straight and there was no thankfully no no swell no major swell yeah. or no no currents in particular um, so we pushed on and we actually uh, pushed up to was it uh, stay after stage five um, of, obviously that's uh, swim, run, swim, run, swim, run on, on the five stages for both of them. There was the service point one. We were looking for, I was looking forward to actually getting my, my nutrition, which I'd planned the day before. And pretty much up to that point was, was happy to, to pick up the bottle and, and had, was a little bit behind on the gels. But um, now looking back out of it, I should have started my gels a lot earlier on certainly on the second run stage if not maybe towards the end of, of, of the stage the first run stage before we got into the water giving it that time to, for it to get through the system and uh, and absorb into the into the, the system into the body yeah and that's i think a, the takeaway that, that we can give that even though some of these stages uh, runs like 800 meters they look like nothing where you would need to take a gel but what you need to consider is that you're constantly working you're either swimming or you're running moving through terrain and and you're expending energy you're mm. expending calories so you need to take that time into account and and i was very diligent with every 20 minutes i wanted my 20 calories to get that 60 uh, 60 grams sorry 20 grams of, of carbs so to get that 60 grams per of 20, carbs per, yeah. per hour yeah, yeah. yeah so so what that breaks down to three gels per, per hour and then then I had, well, roughly, and then, then I had some sports drink to supplement that with as well in on the aid station. So for me, again, this was a big takeaway compared to, to last year that the nutrition plan was great. It was perfect. And I stuck with it. And you also had a very good plan. But you, uh, yeah, as, as you say, I think that probably not sticking to it as diligently in the beginning maybe cost you later. I think I underestimated, undercalculated the amount of that I was needing to take on board. Because if you look at it, I, I calculated to a total of 495 uh, grams with the amount that I was carrying with me and that was based on the 60 grams per hour and we did our best to try and get that within mm. the service points in particular and looking and comparing that into the Ironman world because that's that's all I have that experience of it is something that you need to practice once again we always say to in in the tri the triathlon world we say practice your nutrition within training certainly the longer runs and the longer bikes um, and uh, within the swimming we weren't taking on the nutrition but it was before or after the swim that we were taking taking that opportunity to do it or running with a bottle during the run so it's something which i if i was ever to take part in this event again i would go back and actually increase that amount of calorie intake because you're not <laughs> you're not racing not what i wasn't racing at the the pace the effort um, that I was used to within the <laughs> the smoother waters um, uh, up to that 4k swim the 3.8k swim in Ironman the 180k bike which are smooth smoother and you've got those feeding stations which you can plan and the run which is all on road within an Ironman world so it's totally different sp um, specific nutrition uh, not just the planning but also the um, taking it on, uh, absor absorbing it and, and taking it into, into your body and into your mouth. Yeah, definitely. And uh, another thing is with hydration, it, it, it's difficult, but what we actually learned from on the bus up to, uh, the, to, the, to the start of the race was that, uh, well, I mean, I've known it that you can. It doesn't hurt if you accidentally uh, drink the water here in the Baltic Sea because yeah. it's just 0.3% uh, salt. But I'd never thought about like consciously using that to your advantage by drinking it in the swim runs because that's, as I've been talking about before, something that I was uh, finding challenging and was being concerned about how are we to get enough en enough liquid in with just five aid stations over a nine or ten hour challenge mm, so mm. that's that's really not a lot and and i started to to use that and actually while on the swims drink the baltic sea water 
and uh watching out for the jellyfish there was yeah, lo- yeah, millions there was, of jellyfish yeah, yeah. thankfully none of them were swimming at the level of the of the water it, you, you paddle them away with your paddle rather than the, the hand because you could... yeah but they're, they're not stinging here <laughs> oh they're not okay no, okay, no. okay thanks for telling me that at the beginning <laughs> i was very conscious i want of i wanted you to swim faster <laughs> <laughs> well no are you sure about no, that no I, sorry, sorry we're just I looking didn't. at each other here so no. just to set the scene <laughs> no um so yeah i i took i i took that on board absorbing the seawater um towards the last stage because i was starting to deplete in glycogen and i was starting to deplete in my in my carbs my energy i was started sweating a heck of a lot which um we, we may be jumping around here a little bit and not necessarily I think that's fine, going through, to get to get more through the takeaways absolutely and... the 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 i i struggled uh, i didn't believe michael when he said to me you're gonna get really warm and i'm going well the water's about you know 12 degrees when i first thought it was going to be but it was a bit warmer but on the runs almost every run i was trying to remove my swim cap and my goggles just to let that heat get off uh, out of the extremities so your head if you're ever trying to cool down quickly um um, get your your hat off your head obviously if it's direct sunlight keep your hat on um, maybe get some water and uh, cold water over your head just to help out but uh, or you dip your hands if your hands into the into the uh, a bucket of water or into the sea as we were and that will help you to avoid that heat stroke um, in, in particular um, so I actually absorbed the water the seawater um, towards the end of the the actual event and i think it helped i think that was my only option because we had passed all the service stations and i was down to my last three gels and we still had about 10k to go i think mm, on, yeah. in total of swim run swim uh, swim run itself uh you ended up giving me your last gel um yeah we were moving yeah. pretty slow or run walking at that point uh, because of simon's hamstring so so and i had been really diligent so far with my with my energy intake and with not a lot left to go i i felt like i could really i, I didn't really need the extra energy for that last bit i could definitely make it make it through because i had my glycogen stores topped off and had had kept them uh, at a higher level so so that was fine uh but uh yeah other than that uh, hydration nutrition what else uh, what are takeaways do do we have and what what did we learn from our experience um i certainly planning was a positive thing yesterday we spent quite a lot of time on that you really got to plan this stuff um in these endurance sports and you've got to try it out in your in your training in particular it's i think we we very um that's on the nutrition side of things i think the other thing is that i did not expect the terrain to be like that so underfoot we were walking because if we ran uh well i actually fell once i uh, because i wasn't able to pick my left leg up because my hamstring i tripped over a tree root and i face planted into the ground and um yeah it, it could have been a lot more dangerous and a lot more you know uh, problems so you and we can't even paint the picture for you but if you think but about we, your we, local... we can paint the picture in a way yeah. that if you know the Ötilö or know of Ötilö yeah. we have guys here that have taken part in Ötilö and they said that they think that this is a tougher event because of the terrain and, and Ötilö is mostly gravel roads that you're running on in most cases some technical terrain but sure. but proportionally not a lot and whereas here it's you're really trying to to force your way through bushes and very 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 gnarly vegetation and and difficult l- roots rocks everything it was hard to get out of the water as well so they're really slippy and um this is probably a little bit more of a technical side of things so on shoes i don't think there's a hundred percent shoe out there which is grippy grippy you know for some of the slimy mm. um moss on the but then but there are some better than, than yeah, others yeah certainly there. and i think that what i had the iceberg accelerators with thank you to iceberg who sponsored me with for those they were absolutely brilliant brilliant grip and even on those uh, slippery slippery slopes i could get up fairly easily with them so that that was definitely a big uh, improvement compared to last year Mm. I certainly I was using the on adventure peak shoes not the Gore-Tex ones because that would trap water into it um, the really good thing about the on shoe was that the uh, it was able to drain the water out really quickly they were really comfortable they were really lightweight as well so that was really important to myself however I did struggle on the grippy on, on the gripping side of things a, a lot of it um, I'm not the best trail runner but I, th- I think that's that's a technical aspect that you could build on no matter what type of shoes you've got using mm, out there yeah 
And uh, we're hearing that we need to go to the pricing ceremony now, so we'll probably uh, end this discussion here. We're now recording through our mobile phones uh, live outside. The sun is still setting even further, and uh, it's getting dark. We're going to have some pizza and beer after the pricing ceremony. Uh, what, Don't say beer. <laughs> what, what do you like on your pizza, Simon? <laughs> what I like on pizza? Um, probably like chicken, um, yeah, um, cheese, obviously. That's the yeah, basic yeah. stuff. Um, I think anything at this stage, because I'm actually going to eat absolutely anything. Thing. Um, and you got to try the fish soup when you come out here. Uh, Mikel and I are laughing because I thought that at the beginning of the event, I thought the last thing I actually want to eat is anything from the sea or I don't want to see anything associated with the sea at all. But the fish soup on the finishing line was, oh, my goodness me, it was to die for. <laughs> so I apologize if I upset any uh, chefs out there who, who were involved in it. <laughs> awesome. Get yourselves out here to Orland's swim run uh, for 2018 and uh, definitely get yourself some fish soup on the finish line. So you heard it here first. It's uh, tougher than an Ironman. The fish soup is the best you'll ever have. The nature is magnificent. No reason not to come. And that's actually what uh, this last audio clip is about. This is with the race director of the event, uh, Hube, and he'll tell you in just a couple of minutes why you should come to the event and what makes it so special. I'm back after the pricing ceremony, and now I'm with uh, the race director of Oland Swim Run, Hube, and uh, everybody seems to be thinking that this is an absolutely amazing event. Everybody's uh, raving about it, uh, also talking about how challenging it is, but uh, that's of course on purpose. So uh, I just thought that I would uh, catch two quick minutes with you so that you could tell the listeners who might be interested in going to this event next year, for example, what makes this race unique and why listeners should actually travel here to, to do this race. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for coming and thanks for, for uh, letting me be on the podcast. Uh, I would say if you would like to have a tough race that is tough enough, that it's demanding, maybe not the longest one, but still uh, demanding in, in case of swimming, or in case of temperature, uh, in case of uh, um, elevation, uh, I would say come to Holland Swim Run, uh, challenge yourself, and if you have family members that don't go for the tough enough the long distance we also have shorter ones so that then everybody can enjoy one more question because i personally think i'm proud of my island of course or where i originally come from i think it's absolutely magnificent and beautiful what what do you think about the the actual nature and the wilderness that you go through and and what it looks like the beauty of it what are your favorite parts of uh, of the things that you see on on this race uh, my, my favorite part is definitely at the beginning. It, uh, I would say it's the toughest part. It's called a swim. It's the toughest swim, but it's also the best running. You have uh, pretty high cliffs. You have red granite. You have uh, open sea. You have the northern sea. It's uh, just spectacular. Yeah, I agree. That's my favorite part as well. Thank you, Hube, for once again arranging an amazing event, and I look forward to taking part next year as well. Thanks. See you all, guys, next year. So just a few final takeaways before we close this show off. My number one takeaway is probably that preparation is absolutely key when it comes to swim run. Both in terms of training, even with my knee injury that I had that prevented a lot of my run training, that was specific for swim run, I should say. I was so much better prepared for this race than last year's race. I'm thinking especially about the amount of swim training, cold water adaptations I got from a lot of open water training in the last four weeks before the race, and also a lot of time to work with the paddles to strengthen my shoulders. Yes, I was still hurting in the race, but uh, I could use my shoulders the day after and not as last year where where they were completely useless even two weeks after the race. And uh, so that was a big thing for me, a big difference. Nutrition, as we talked about uh, several times throughout this episode, that was key and having that great nutrition plan. And uh, in my case, uh, Simon would probably agree that he didn't quite stick to it but I stuck to it religiously and that definitely helped I had no issues whatsoever with uh, with energy depletion or anything so and also obviously 
sufficient uh, energy intake will help your recovery as well. So I'm feeling really fresh now. Went for a bike ride today, three days after the event, and I'm busy with my move, but I'll keep training lightly. So no worries on that side of things. And also preparation in terms of actually having the mandatory equipment, reading the, the PM. We were checked for maps and first aid kits when we got to the finish line and had we not had them with us and kept them in safely in the pocket of our wetsuits, we would probably have been... I don't know if we would have been disqualified, but we probably wouldn't have won the Finnish National Championships. At least we might have been disqualified from that category. So uh, that was uh, crucial to go through all the details, make sure you have everything with you. And obviously something that uh, we also need to need to consider in terms of preparation is that specific swim run training. And that's something that I think could be done better better and on the actual terrain or similar terrain to where we were training i didn't do that i the running was very smooth and gravel roads a bit of single track trail but pretty groomed when i was training so having to actually go through that really wild terrain would have been good to do in training other than that, my main takeaway is really, if you're at all interested, look this event up, go to the show notes, I'll link to a few videos and uh, photos of, of the event and you can have a look. I'll be very happy to help you out with any sort of arrangements that, that you need to come here because I really want this event to grow. I love it so much. It's a fantastic event, so don't hesitate to reach out. That's michael at scientifictriathlon.com and michael with a K. And also one final quick word. I'm very grateful to Colting Wetsuits and in particular Marcus, uh, who works there, Marcus Milburn, and uh, and to Icebug for sponsoring me with equipment. I got a Colting Wetsuit or Swim Run Suit, I should say, for the event and i was actually in a real real situation of need when i reached out to them because my other swim run suit which was not a colton wetsuit had just broken training and uh, marcus quickly sent me a suit and uh, the swim caps and everything it needed so that was brilliant uh, it was an absolute joy to running compared to even when though i've been very happy with my other swim run suit it was a night and day difference. The Colting swim run suit is so perfectly designed for swimming and running that uh, I absolutely loved it. The one thing that I would uh, would say is that I really missed a back pocket. And if both of me and Simon would have had that swim run suit, we would have had a difficult time to, we would have needed to be very creative with how we would have, for example, carried that first aid kit and so on. But um, all in all, I'm very happy with that. And also the Colting paddles that both me and Simon used. And also big thanks to Icebag for sending me their Icebag Acceleridas swim run shoes. Those were brilliant, fantastic grip, draining super fast. And I really liked them and would definitely recommend them as well as the Colting swim run suit to anybody. So thank you again to Colting Wetsuits and Icebag for that. The show notes for today's episode can be found on thattriathlonshow.com and there you'll be able to download the training program that me and Simon used to prepare for this race. Although, as I said, my knee was a bit buggy at times and I didn't do all of the runs, but uh, it was what was intended. So go to thattriathlonshow.com to download that training program. The next couple of episodes will be with Simon once again and uh, these episodes will be more about triathlon training and will cover things like what you should do as a beginner an improver and an advanced athlete both in terms of general triathlon training but also swimming biking and running specifically and what Simon's view of these things are and it's uh, about time we have Simon on the show given that uh, he's been coaching me for well over a year now and uh, this podcast is uh, more than it's about half a year old or something, so um, definitely time to have Simon on, on. It was great to have these episodes recorded live with him in the That Triathlon Show temporary studio on the Orland Islands uh, during the swim run weekend. So look forward to that. Also, I want to remind you that I have set myself a goal of reaching 105 star reviews on iTunes before the end of this year. 
this end is quickly coming to a close it's just one quarter left so i need all the help i can get and somebody who did help me was uh, this is an itunes review from sweden from ped h67 he writes the missing link five stars this podcast is the missing link since the podcast try talk stopped more than five years ago one of my go-to podcasts for triathlon and training information interesting guests and well-researched subjects per subjects a perfect company for long training ride or runs keep up the good work michael so if you want to help me out to in reaching my goal then please rate and review that triathlon show in itunes or your podcast player app that really really helps me get the word out about the show thank you as always for listening keep training smart and keep loving triathlon